Connecting Church. Good morning, Pastor Jason. So happy to see all these beautiful faces this morning, ready to worship the Lord. Yep. I got a scripture I want to share with you this morning. Um, yeah, it comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 14 through 16. It says, you are the light of the world. Hallelujah. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. <clears throat> Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Yes. Amen. Amen. So let's sing praises this morning to our Heavenly Father, and let's let our light shine before Him. If we can bow our heads. Father God, we just come before you, Father, and we just want to glorify you on this beautiful day, Father. We thank you for another day of life, Father God. Thank you. Another Lord. day of breath, Father God, yes. that we can worship you with our hands. We can worship you with our feet, with Praise our voices, you. Father God. We yes. just thank you so much. We want to just glorify you and honor you this morning, and we pray in Christ Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen, amen. and amen and amen. I think this song may be familiar to many of you and if not i'm singing it one time through and you can join me when you wish okay in christ alone i place my trust and find my glory in the power of the cross and every victory let it be said my source of strength, hallelujah. My source of hope is Christ alone. See, easy, we'll sing again. In Christ alone, I place my trust and find my glory in the power of the cross. Every victory, let it be said of me, my source of strength, my source of hope is Christ alone. Let's do it one more so we can remember for next time. In Christ alone, I place my trust. And find my glory in the power of the cross. In every victory, let it be said of me, my source of strength, my source of hope is Christ alone. Let's applaud the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. The Lord is good. Let the earth rejoice, let the earth rejoice, let the people be glad that our God reigns. Let's sing that chorus once more. The Lord reigns, look, the Lord reigns, thank you Lord. The Lord reigns, let the earth rejoice, let the earth rejoice, let the earth rejoice, let the people be glad. Burns up all his enemies. The hills well like wax at the presence of the Lord. Oh, yeah. At the presence of the Lord. The Lord reigns. The Lord reigns. The Lord reigns. Let the earth rejoice. Let the earth rejoice. Let the earth rejoice. Let the people be glad. Oh, the heavens are 
heavenly there is righteousness. The people sing his glory. For you, O oh Lord, are exalted over all the earth. Over all the earth. The Lord reigns. The Lord reigns. The Lord reigns at the earth. Let the earth rejoice, let the earth rejoice, let the people be glad that our God reigns to the courts. The Lord reigns, the Lord reigns, the Lord reigns. Let the earth rejoice, let the earth rejoice, let the earth rejoice, let the people be So this is the this is one of those which will be Washed in his blood. This is my son. This is my son. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my son. This is my Perfect submission, perfect freedom, vision so bright, I must in my Oh, <laughs> 
That's always going to be a good idea. Now, every time I ask you this question, you're very kind because you always consent. I hope that's the same thing this morning. Is it too early to sing a Christmas song? Oh, praise the Lord. Long time ago in Bethlehem, all the Holy Bible say. Okay, wait, wait. Now, you know, every time we do this song, people always ask, is it all right if we make noises? I said, what kind of noises? You know, once you start singing that song, we feel like we should go. <laughs> okay, so you can do anything you want as long as you're praising the Lord. Yeah, see? Long time ago in Bethlehem, the Holy Bible said, Mary's boy, child of Jesus Christ, was born on Christmas. Day. Do it again, do it again. Was born on Christmas Day. Hark now here, hark now hear the angels sing a new thing born today. And we will live forever because of Christmas Day. Trumpets sound, trumpets sound and angels sing. Listen what they say. Man will live forever. 
because of Christmas Day. Do that two more times. But I'm going to live forevermore because of Christmas Day. One more time. And then I'm going to live forevermore because of Christmas Day. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Pastor Matthew. So we'll sing Psalm 42, where we read, As the deer panted for the water, so my soul longeth after thee. You alone are my heart's desire. Make that your prayer. We'll sing one more time again. As the deer panted for the water, so my soul longeth after thee. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship thee. Let's do it one more time. As the deer, as the deer panted for the water, so my soul longeth after thee. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship. so much And I long to worship. And I long to worship. And I long to worship. Now we're going to sing this next song in Hawaiian. I have put the translation there on the screen. So you'll be able to see it. The folks on Zoom will be able to see that too. Some of you, if you've been here before, you know about this song. Originally written in New Zealand and then translated 
from their language, Maori, into Hawaiian by a guy, he's now retired, who was the Hawaiian language teacher at uh, Kamehameha Schools just down the road. Um, Ho'okele Crab, Kumu Ho'okele Crab, Moses Crab, Moses was his English name. And um, so, and then I'd encourage you to give it your best shot in singing in uh, Hawaiian language that you would olelo Hawaii um, because in in all practical purposes you're probably not standing next to or, or sitting next to a native Hawaiian speaker so even if you mess up the pronunciation nobody knows just us okay so we'll sing to the Lord Try just the voices. Oh, oh, oh. Thank you. 
steps Ladies and gentlemen, we can take the next few minutes for you to greet one another in the love of the Lord. Be reminded that we are still in COVID-19 protocol. So if you get next to somebody and they don't want to shake your hand, just wave across the room at them, bump their fist, toe tap. Be sure to see the people on the lanai because they want to say hi to you. And be sure to see Chris when she comes around with the camera so that all of the Zoom people can see you there on the camera as well. All right, everybody's ready. Praise the Lord. All right, good morning, the whole volcano. <laughs> I see way more faces than that. Let's try that again. Good morning, the whole volcano. Hallelujah. Ah, what a beautiful day, isn't it? The light is shining on us, and we can let our light shine this morning. Um, so we've got some announcements for you this morning. I do want to say, because I do see some new faces, and especially in this, this side of the room, um, I just, I'm just i thankful for my sister this morning. Was it Michaela? Mikala. Sister, thank you, because you came, and you came with the rhythm and the clapping. For, for those of you who don't know me and haven't met me, I have no rhythm. And so please don't... <laughs> me uh, to keep the beat because it's I'm gonna mess you up but I saw my sister she was clapping and I was like thank you Lord thank you even uh Uncle Eddie you can keep your eye on her <laughs> all right so we've got some announcements for you this morning um the first one will come from my lovely wife Stacy. Good morning, New Hope Volcano. Good morning. Aloha. Uh, ladies, yes. we will be meeting. Our next women's study will be Saturday. So two weeks from now, Saturday, August 28th, 8 a.m. over Zoom. Um, if you need the information and you haven't already given me your email and you want to be a part of this, please let me know so I can sign you up. Um, we will be doing judges and Ruth. 
this month. Okay. So if you got into judges and you finished judges, cause it is a small book and you haven't got into Ruth yet. Let's get crack -a lacking guys. <laughs> two books this month. And there's going to be a few months that we're going to be doing two books and not two small books like judges. And we're going to be doing first and second Samuel in one month, first and second Kings in one month. And they're a little bit longer, but you know what? It's accountability, guys. We need to be in our word every day. God is revealing things to us through his word. Amen. Um, so amen, and I love you. What about they want to get join the group? Hmm? Join the group. I just said that. You're okay. not paying attention. I okay. love you. Love you, too. <laughs> All right. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, uh, uh, another quick announcement I just want to say. Antilani told me to announce that this Saturday, the thrift shop will be open. And so for those of you who know, and for those of you who don't know, uh, the thrift shop is located in that building over there. And it will be open from 9 a.m. Antilani until 12. till 12, 9 a.m. till 12 this Saturday. So if you want to come and be blessed, uh, I, there's so many different goodies in there. You can come and check them out this Saturday, 9 to, 9 to 12. Um, our next announcement comes from our sister, Chris. Good morning. All right, let's see. Wow, how about that praise and worship this morning? Woohoo! I heard a solo. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, let's see. People on Zoom, part of the service sounded a little bit like Old Town Radio. I'm sorry. We're doing the best we can. I, it's hard to figure out, but there were some ladies dancing hula in the back, and the Zoomers got to see that. Woohoo! Exciting. Um, so every service is on our YouTube channel and most services are on our newhopevolcano.com. So I say most because it's only about four months worth and then we refresh and we can only fit so many on there. So if you want to find something from way back, go to newhopevolcano.com. But if you want to see like the celebration of life that happened here yesterday for Rodney, it is on both. Okay, just so it's clear. And if you want to get our weekly emails with the Zoom links and any updates, I need your email address. So let me know. Or if you want to stop getting our emails, also let me know. Uh, Monday, people will be praying. Oh, speaking of prayer, you can always pray for our Zoom because it seems like it should work just like everything else just works. But every Sunday is a challenge. So I'm back there like, okay, God, you can make this happen. So pray with me on that. And people want to pray for you, especially on Monday. So let us know specifically what to pray about. Wednesday at five o'clock yep. right here and on Zoom yep. is the Bible study, um, The Chosen. Yep. Jason will probably talk yep. more about that. It. It's an awesome thing. Um, there is usually hula on Thursday, but it is currently on break. Men's ministry is this Saturday. Yep which is this Saturday, 9 a.m. in person and on Zoom, yep. women's ministry, what she said, but it's the last Saturday, which is the, eight, the 28th, coming up also quickly. Um, just so you know, we do um, make note of who's here in case we need to contact Trace. So I don't know if that makes you feel better or worse, but if, we do, if, if anything happens, we will be contacting you. So don't worry about that. And Brother Kay wants to talk about Celebrate Recovery. Thank you. Just real quick, gang. Hi. Oh, you guys are all pumped up this morning. Awesome. Praise <laughs> Jesus. So anyway, celebrate recovery every Friday from 6 to 8 p.m. I have to apologize because this week I wasn't feeling so well and I didn't, I, I was okay. But I wanted to make sure that I didn't spread anything if I had something. So we didn't have Celebrate Recovery live here on Friday night. But if we are not live here, I can guarantee you we will be on Zoom, on the church Zoom. So please come in, come to the Zoom. We can do it on Zoom. We already have approval from the national team. It's all good. Everybody's got hurts, hangups, and habits. It's not just about drugs and alcohol. It's about anger. It's about codependency. It's about division. 
It's about all these things that the enemy tries to do to get us to be separate from one another. Come to celebrate recovery. It's a safe place where you can come and dump your junk and let Jesus come in and fill you up. Thank you. Thank you, brother. That's some beautiful singing this morning, too. I'll tell you, I'll tell, I have my eye on you. I have my eye on you. Um, so, yeah, we've got men's ministry this Saturday, 9 a.m. We finished the book of Romans. I, the Lord hasn't put it on my heart yet what we will be getting into next, but join us and find out. I'll leave you with a cliffhanger. <laughs> this Wednesday, though, we've been having a great time. You know, we've got, we've watched the first, the, the pilot episode and the first episode of the chosen series and you know we're going to talk about it every week to invite you it's a it's a completely different experience it's different from the men's ministry it's different from the women's ministry it's different from sunday service we come in we turn the lights down low we put on a, a video series that walks us through um, the gospels and so we watch the series and then we after it's finished the videos are about maybe 50 minutes long we have a discussion afterwards. And what was funny that Kia and I noticed is that we watched the video and we had a discussion and then the discussion went away from the video and just all, all about the Bible and all about God. And so <clears throat> the video leads us, but the Holy Spirit leads us in discussion. So, um, and then we have a book, Brother Kia, is it in yet? It's supposed to be in, we'll see. Okay, okay. So books are supposed to be in this week. Hopefully we'll pray for that. Um, yeah, please pray for that. It's not the children, it's the shipping. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We all know about that, let me tell you. Um, so there's also a book that we can follow. Some Most of you have it already, I believe, but if you're new and you want to join, uh, we're waiting on some more books to get to you if you want them. Uh, and so it's a Bible study. It, it doesn't, it, it follows the, the video series, but it also digs a lot deeper into the word of God. And so... Um, if you want to join us, it's this Wednesday at five o'clock. Um, I think Chris covered all of the website, the YouTube page. So uh, we're about to collect the tithes and offerings. We'd like to offer you an opportunity if you want to. Um, you can use your cell phones or any device and you can go to our website, newhopevolcano.com. There's a link on there that says give online. If you want to give that way, it's very convenient. It's safe. It's easy. Uh, if you're in the building and you want to give, we have the offering bowl in the back by Auntie Bobby on the yes table. It'll always be there. Um, so you can feel free to give your tithe or your offering that way. Now, all of that being said, we like to say if you're visiting us for the first time, please just hold back on your money and be blessed with what the Lord has in store for you this morning. If you're visiting us from another church, we ask that you too, please hold back on your money and take it to your home church. And if this is your home church, we just ask that you please give with a cheerful heart. If we could bow our heads. Father God, we just come before you this morning, Father God, as one congregation, Father. Father, we know that nothing can separate us from your love, Father God. And we come this morning and we offer our worship to you, Father God. Father, we offer our tithes and our offerings to you because you are our great provider, Father God. You provide everything for us. Every single thing that we have down to the breath of life is because of you, Father God. And this morning, we want to give our tithes and our offerings up to you, Father God. We pray that you multiply it in abundance. We pray that you use it according to your will, Father God. Father, we all gather this morning for one purpose and one reason only, and that is because of you, Father. We want to honor you. We want to worship you. We want to put you first, Father God. We set aside all of our differences, Father, and we put our focus on you this morning, Father. We pray for a great word from Pastor Ray that comes directly from you to our hearts, Father God. And we pray that we can take that word and apply it to our lives, Father, as we leave this building. But Father, we're thankful for this church family that, that we may only have one thing in common, and that is Jesus, Father God, but that is enough. That is enough. Father God, we just thank you so much. We love you. We want to honor you and give you all the praise and glory this morning in Christ Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen. and amen. Thank you, Pastor. Jason. Praise the Lord. Pastor Jason just got this brand new Bible that his wife gave you. And I thought, I, I'm going to read something from here. Now, see, already we're getting in a little problem because uh, 
I don't know if you can see this, but it's like the print is like a line. In my, my vision, it's like a line. It's so small. You know, my, my Bible that I use is the large print Bible. I could hold it up and you could read it from the parking lot. That's, that's how big. It's almost, it's almost like one letter per page. And, um, but we have been um, going through over the last, this is part number nine. So at least nine times we've been discussing this. And in between, uh, Kea has preached messages. Pastor Jason has preached a few messages. So it's been a long time since we have been looking at Psalm 23. I said to you that um, Psalm 23, at least in my opinion, was, was very familiar, even to people who are outside of the church. Most of the time, my guess would be that they have heard it, we have heard it at a celebration of life, at a funeral of some sort, Psalm 23 has been used. The Psalm says, so we, I propose to you that not only was this rich, because it's only, it's very short, not only was it rich, but you didn't, you wouldn't even have to take one whole verse. You could take portions of a verse and still glean lots of gems from it. The Lord is my shepherd, it begins. My, our personal shepherd, I have all I need, means he's going to take care of us. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. Everybody needs that from time to time. He guides me along the right paths, the opposite being the wrong paths where we don't want to be there, bringing honor to his name. We always have an opportunity to glorify him and to worship him in that way, to tell our friends and family, it's because of the Lord that I've been able to withstand this or see my way through this very trying time or this uh, trying circumstance. <laughs> then it says, even though I walk through the darkest valley, means terrible things are going to occur. The, and we shouldn't, we shouldn't uh, be surprised by that because the, the, the Bible says in this world, you will have trouble. You will have turmoil. So um, it says then, even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid for you are close beside me. Hallelujah. It means the Lord is always going to be with you. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. We did a week on that. Sometimes we have a misconception of what the rod and the staff are supposed to do. And um, the Lord has said to us, it, these are really, really beneficial tools that he uses in our life to protect us from things that may come to hurt or harm or, or uh, confuse us. And uh, a rod in order that he might guide us. So if we're heading in a direction which we shouldn't be heading, he's going to guide us back onto the right path into the place where we're supposed to be. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. And if you remember when we spoke, uh, spoke about that, I said to you, this was a feast. This was a full-on banquet. That's the word lots of translations uh, or paraphrases use was a full-on banquet. It wasn't a thrown together very haphazardly, very last minute kind of banquet. It's been meticulously prepared in order that you get the very best feast that anybody on heaven and on earth would be able to present to you. That's what the Lord would do for you. It's him who's doing the preparation. He is the planner. He is the caterer. He is the one who sets it up for you. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. And I had the opportunity to say to a couple of three people that that is a critically important part of this verse. The banquet, this lavish banquet, comes in the middle during your turmoil, during the most challenging circumstance that we might face on this earth. So he's not waiting for you to you know, become victorious and come through it. And then the banquet comes, the victory banquet. The victory banquet comes in the middle of 
that circumstance, during the trouble, while you are being attacked by all on all sides, while there is animosity aimed toward you, that's when this banquet begins. My cup, uh, sorry, you, you honor me by anointing my head with oil. We just talked about that uh, last week. My cup overflows with blessings. Surely your goodness and unfailing love. Now listen, this is what we're talking about today. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me. That's an interesting word. To, it will pursue me all of the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. Heavenly Father, we just pray that you would bless the reading of this word, that you would allow us to uh, glean all that you have for us, that it would be our guide, that it would be our teacher, that it would be our comforter. Uh, comforter. We commit all that to you, Lord, this morning in Jesus Christ's holy name. Congregation, you can help me close by saying amen and amen. Now, we've gone through all of these different verses. I wanted you to just notice and just uh, put in your mind how this begins. The Lord, we be, when I started reading to you, verse number one, Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. And then we get to the end, which is what we're going to look at today. And so the Lord is my shepherd. And this is the end. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Means we're going to be with him with the Lord forever. And so I say again, this Psalm, Psalm 23, is all about God. It's all about his goodness to you and to me. That's the whole Psalm. And today we look at this, just this last verse. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. That's a promise to you and to me. And it continues, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's heaven. They're talking about heaven. Now, as we go through, I'm going to share verses with you. If you want the, the notes, there are some on the chairs. If you need some more, I think there's more out there. There'll be uh, those verses out on the screen. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's heaven. And that's, I want to propose to you, is the future. Because certainly you must know, we are not living in heaven right now. In fact, we are a place where we live right now, where we live on the earth, kind of looks like it's getting farther and farther away from heaven. Almost every day, if you open up the news or open up the newspaper and you read an article of some sort, it always appears that we are moving farther and farther and farther away from the Lord. Now, anytime you and I are living life here on earth, we should always be uh, um, aware that we have very specific uh, uh, verses like this one and others that speak about heaven and speak about the future. And the practical application is, so now as we live here, our days here on earth, anytime you and I start to worry or start to fret, we need to remember, we need to bring to our remembrance that last verse in Psalm 23, which says, surely goodness and mercy will follow you how many days? All of the days of your life. And the, he says to us further, I will, God says, I will dwell in the house of the Lord with forever. We're going to be there forever. Now, if you have worry, this should come to your mind immediately. If you have difficulty, this is where you should hang your hat on a verse like this or others. If you get anxious, if you get fearful, if you start to worry, this is where we should start to, to focus our attention. If we begin to experience anxiety, as we know that we will, anxiety we feel sometimes, it's not big when it, when it starts many times, but it begins to well up. So it's small anxiety, but left unaddressed, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. It wells up within us over anxiety over our future. 
If that occurs, go immediately to Psalm 23 to this last verse, because it really does in a practical way proclaim really clearly that as a believer, you don't need to fear the future. And I want to give you some reasons. The first one being because God's goodness is watching over me. That's a fact. The Bible says, surely goodness will follow me all of the days of my life. I rest my case. He says it. I believe it. I hope that's for, true for you too. He said it. You've, we've believed it, and we're going to walk it out. This is to say that God, in his goodness, is always paying attention to you, no matter what circumstance you have. There's never going to be one second, not one millisecond, where he's not paying attention to you. He's always going to pay attention to you. He's not just loving you, but he's paying attention to you every single moment so that he can take care of you in a way that only our father can. The seven and a half billion people on the earth give or take uh, uh, one or two, but God and God's created all these people, all of us. But he still, I want to stress that, he still, still, still is going to, pay, going to pay attention to you. He's concerned about you. He's concerned about loving you. And he wants to do it 100% of the time. There's never going to be a let up. You know, so that he has to take a break from loving you so he can rest, so he can gather his thoughts, whatever. 100% of the time, he's loving you. He's watching over you. He's concerned about you. Psalm 145 says, the Lord watches over all who love him. So if you wanted a prerequisite, if you wanted to uh, uh, identify a prerequisite for this kind of attention, look at that. The Lord watches over who? All who love him. Now, how does that work? How does God watch over and protect you? How does it flesh itself out? Well, one of the ways just one of the ways is angels. There are angels watching over you. The Bible says in Psalm 91, God orders his angels there to protect you wherever you go. There are angels watching over you wherever you go. Now, does this mean that only good things will happen to you? Well, I think you know, because we said it earlier on, the answer to that question is no. In fact, say in your most emphatic voice, say no, okay, at the count of three, one, two, three, no, it's not saying that only good things will happen to you, not saying that at all. Psalm 23 says, surely goodness will follow me all the days of my life. It means that God will ensure that good will come out of the things that occur every single day of your life. It certainly leads us very well into the verse uh, we read in Romans chapter 8 and in verse 28. I gave it to you in your notes. We know that in all things, all the things that happens to us is working for our good, it doesn't say it's all good. It said it's going to work out for our good if, now this is the conditional part of the phrase, if, this is the promise, if we love God and are fitting in to his plans. If we love the Lord and are being called, marching out our lives according to his plans purpose. So you and I really in a practical sense, we don't need to fear the future because number one, God's goodness is watching over me. And then number two, because God's grace is upon me. God's grace is upon me while goodness is working around me, watching out for me. God's grace is working inside of me. That's how those two things work out. This God's grace is working in me at the same time that God's goodness is working on the outside of me. The Bible says, 
surely. I like that word because it means to us, the readers in this day, it says there is no doubt. Don't even question it. This is a fact. It says, surely, not just goodness, but mercy, the Bible says, will follow me all the days of my life. Now, what's mercy? Mercy is grace in action. Anything that you would think of that would fit in the category grace, if you put it into action, then that is mercy. In fact, Isaiah in chapter 60, I read to you from verse 10. It says, I will have mercy on, listen to what it says. I will have mercy on you through my grace. I love that. Now, let me call your attention to Psalm 103. This is a fabulous verse. God lists in this, uh, in this chapter a number of ways that he is going to show us mercy. It's almost like a, a list that you can start to check off. Very, very, uh, it's full. So let me begin reading. I will not forget the glorious things that God does for me. Okay, so he says, I'm not going to forget these things. And then it says, now I'm going to list these things. He forgives. Okay, now if the list stops right there, still we would have been really, really blessed. But he forgives all my sins. So he does that. He heals me. Now, remember I said these are all demonstrative um, uh, phrases that would indicate what mercy is. He heals me. That's mercy. He ransoms me from hell. We're not going to go to hell because the ransom's been paid. That's mercy. He surrounds me with loving kindness. That's mercy. He fills my life with good things. He is merciful and tender toward those who don't deserve it. I'm in that list. That's mercy. He is slow to, uh, slow to get angry. I'm glad for that because that's mercy. He never bears a grudge, which means he's not mad at you. He's not upset at you. He's not going to hold things against you. He has not punished us as we deserve for all our sins for his mercy, this is big, is as great as the height of the heavens, immense. He is like a father to us, tender and sympathetic to those who reverence him. That's why Hebrews chapter 4 says in verse 16, we can come before God's throne. This is speaking as if it's a prayer where we can receive mercy and grace and goodness goodness to help us when we need it. We don't have to fear the future because God's goodness is watching over me and God's grace is working inside of me, inside of us. And then number three, God's glory. Glory is waiting for me. God's glory. So um, there are some of you who are new. So my name is Glory, Raymond Glory. And my wife's maiden name, my wife is sitting out there. She is Lonnie Goodness. And so when she we married, she's an only child. So Lonnie said, you know, um, I would like my family name to carry on. And as I have no siblings, would it be all right if you if I kept my my maiden name hyphenated your name. So her name now and our son's name and our grandchildren's name is goodness hyphen glory. So in a very practical way, you heard it here. She's gone from goodness to glory. <laughs> this is a real story. Goodness to glory. God's glory is waiting for me. The verse we read this morning, our central verse said, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I said earlier, I'll say it again, that's heaven. And that really is what connects today with tomorrow. 
heaven for us all who believe. That's what connects today to tomorrow is heaven. Even after you have lived a life of blessing here on this earth, that you have received all of God's richest blessings, that's not the end. Even if you would have been totally satisfied as having lived a full life here on earth, that's not the end. Because the psalm that we read today is building toward a crescendo. It's getting bigger and better all the time. Because we are going to heaven that death is not the end that we're going to heaven and if you have a happy dance this is where you should use it now i don't know what your happy dance is i used to have very uh energetic happy dances but now as my body is getting older my happy dance is very small yeah eh, eh, eh. we're going to heaven yeah we're going to heaven yeah this is the thing that should really you know, send us in to orbit because we are going to heaven. The Bible says that. The Bible promises that. It's it's a, uh, when we experience death, which we will, that is the transition. That's the transition. I told you earlier that the connection between today and tomorrow is heaven. So when we leave today, to get to tomorrow in heaven, that is a that's a transition. That's a they're just a transfer because God has saved us for the best, and He's saving the best for last. So even though you, as I said, you had a fabulous life here on earth, the best is yet to come because we're heading for heaven. If the Lord is your shepherd, everybody who's here listening to me, everybody on Zoom listening to me, if the Lord is your shepherd, it is going to guarantee get better and better and better. Because even if, let's say, you were to have a tough life here, a terrible, challenging, painful life here. The Bible verse we read says, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. No matter what has occurred here, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And when we dwell there, that's a place that has no sorrow. That's a place where we don't experience any suffering, that there be no more sin, there be no more darkness, no sadness, there be no more punishments for anybody, there be no more pain, there be no more pressure, there be no more COVID-19 protocol in heaven because there's no COVID-19 in heaven. So what, how do we know? The Lord is your shepherd. Romans chapter 9 and in verse 23 says, God wanted to reveal his abundant glory. God wanted to show, demonstrate to us his loving, he want, uh, his love. He, he wanted to demonstrate how good he was going to be to us, how kind. He wanted to dis, uh, uh, demonstrate in a real way how merciful he was going to be. He wanted to show his abundant glory, which was poured out on us. That's you and me who are the objects the focus of his mercy and who he has prepared in advance. He's talking about you to receive. He's prepared you in advance to receive his glory. We have been prepared. It's sort of like we're the setting. Choose your favorite setting. Platinum, gold, silver, whatever it happens to be. We are the setting. He's prepared it in order that he might uh, um, impart to us, give to us his glory. It's sort of like we are the setting, ready to receive this fantastic flawless gift, as if it was a flawless diamond. We have been, are being prepared to receive this glory. Not our glory. The Bible says his glory. We are being prepared to receive it. Now, what are these are three truths but the question is we're still living here on earth 
What are the implications of that? As we walk it out now in the world in which we live, what are the implications? Because between now and when you and I might go to heaven, we're still going to have to live our life. So how do we do that? What does it mean in light of what God has said? Now, now that I know that, God, so if we said, okay, God is watching over me. I know that God is, is, his grace is protecting me. I know that his glory is awaiting me. But when tomorrow rolls around Monday, when it rolls around, how do I live? That's the next bullet I gave you. And how do I live fully, having nothing held back and fearlessly, so that I'm not foolish, but I am fearless. There's a difference. How do I live fearlessly in the love of the Lord? Here's the first thing I do. I'm going to stay grateful and generous because God is so good to me. You can fill it in that way if you wish. I'm going to live grateful and generous because God is so good to me. God is generous to me probably to you too. God expects me then and you to be grateful and generous with other people. And he wants us to be that way for the rest of our lives. Psalm 118 says, give thanks continually to our Lord because he is so good and because his mercy will never run out. If you have gratefulness in your heart, you're going to, this has been, been proven physiologically, you're going to live longer if you have goodness in your heart. You're going to live a healthier life here if you have goodness in your heart. You are going to be, there are many studies, they always find the same thing. If your heart is good, generous, good heart, kind, patient, all of the fruit of the Spirit, you will live a happier, more joyful life. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12, this is verse 28, we have been given possession of an unshakable kingdom, which means we don't have to be afraid. This kingdom is, nothing's happening to it. Unshakable kingdom, it says, let us therefore, what? Be grateful. Because the kingdom is unshakable, let us be grateful and use our gratitude to worship God in the way that pleases him with reverence and awe. I hear, because of my place in the church, I hear many times when people have um, a praise report of times when they have been generous. And I'm so blessed. I'm blessed to tears many times because it's sort of like the Bible just lives itself out through you. I can see the Bible, you know, in practical ways through you because you are generous. I can see many places where you have been generous. And the thing I guess that really resonates with me is that when you are generous, you are generous. So I know because I'm the pastor. You and I have a relationship, but after me, nobody knows means that you have been generous in total secret, which is exactly the way it's supposed to go, because you are in doing that. I've said this to you many times, too, both in public and in private. You are storing up your treasures in heaven. If you receive your reward here, then there's no need to give your reward when you get to heaven. But if you are uh, um, if you are demonstrating generosity here in a secret way, it's exactly what God would have for you and for me. I'm so glad sometimes when you when you share those those stories with me. You are expressing gratitude and generosity all at the same time. Develop a daily habit. I want to say that again. Develop a daily habit of being grateful with all of the things that are around you. You know, um, and sometimes that could be a challenge, but it can come 
if you train your mind and your heart, it can come through in some very, very practical ways. If you train yourself to be grateful in the circumstance or with the things that you are experiencing right now. Many of you know, I tell you stories many, many times that I have neighbors who have uh, taken to collecting the all shade tree mechanics. And it seems like they're better on the shade tree than on the mechanics part because there are 13 cars and trucks in the neighbor's yard. Everybody who comes to my house has to pass, you know, if you want to be nice and you can say these are the cars that they're going to eventually fix. If you're not so nice, you just call it a junkyard. Okay, so I mean, and it, and, it, and it really is, if you think of the stereotypical picture in your mind, that's what mine looks like. No tires, they're all up on blocks. Some of them not even on blocks, they're in the ground and whatnot. And, and I always sometimes have thought, oh, well, what, what is there to be thankful you know, for there? Um, I'm not thankful for that. Um, but recently I have been training myself so that I said to myself, well, I'm grateful that the people don't live there anymore. They left, they left the cars. I'm not okay, but at least the people don't live there. And I have been training myself to look, if I look at this junkyard, is there anything that I can be thankful for? Is there anything that I can be grateful for? And I would say that you might be faced with some of those same circumstances. I think you can find opportunity to be grateful in everything if you look hard enough, or if you look with the eyes and the heart of the Lord, you can find things to be grateful of. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 8, you have been treated generously, that's by God, so live generously, give as freely as you have received, and if you do that, Psalm 112 promises, God will come. Now, let me just stop right there and tell you that one more time. That begins, this is verse, verse 5, God will come to him, come to her. Everybody who is listening to me right now, God will come to him, come to her. Do whatever is good or bad in your life, God will, this verse says, will come to him, will come to him, and here's how you have to have good come to you. Good will come to him or her who is generous. Such people lend freely. In other words, hey, do you need a car? I have an extra car. Do you need a place to stay while you're transitioning to your new place? I have a place where you can stay. Do you need food to get you past until your next paycheck? I have that for you. Do you need clothing to wear? I have that. I got a thrift shop full of clothes for you. Do you need a, a business suit because you're being interviewed for a position, perhaps a promotion? You're looking for something to present a better image? I can find that for you. That's what that's, that's, what that's talking about. You need somebody to drive you to the doctor, I can drive you. You need somebody, it's going to be some an appointment you're concerned with. You want somebody to sit with you, I can sit with you. You need somebody to pick up your prescription, I can do that for you. It is an all-encompassing generosity where time is in there, talent is in there, treasure is in there, motivation, praise, every area of your life is in there and don't un, uh, don't don't uh, underestimate some of the things that we sometimes i don't know i don't think we we try to do it but we we sort of default to minimizing things like encouragement encourage somebody you don't know how how medicinal that is to a person's spirit to be encouraged 
encourage somebody, praise somebody, help somebody. Generosity in every single area of your life. Good will come to him. This is the Matthew verse, who is generous. Such people lend freely and conduct their affairs honestly. They will never, I'll say again, they will never be shaken. They don't fear bad news because they trust the Lord to care for them. They are confident and fearless in facing their opposition. And then it gives the reason. Here it is. Because they give generously to those in need, they will have influence and honor. So if you want to be confident, if you want to be fearless, then this verse and others say, then become generous. If you want to vanquish the opposition in your life, if you want to address competitors, oppressors, haters, you want to, you want to address neutralizers, then the thing that you do, the Bible says, not me, the Bible says, choose generosity, choose gratitude, and then number two, be grateful gracious to everyone because God is so gracious with me. The more gracious you are with other people, the less fearful you're going to be in your life. The fact of the matter is God wants you to pass on the good things. Oh, we should have been singing, pass it on, because that's exactly what God wants us to do, pass on the good things. He wants us to be the conduit of his blessings, not the reservoir, the conduit of his blessings. Here's what the Bible says in Ephesians, it's chapter four. Be gracious and merciful to everyone. Why? Because we said at the outset, because God is, is this way with us, gracious with us, merciful with us. Be gracious and merciful to everyone, the Bible says, and forgive others just as God has forgiven you because of Christ. The Bible says that God really, I put it in my paraphrase, God really cuts you a bunch of slack, you and me, plenty slack. Before we can upset him and do anything, he asks you, he's saying to us, hey, if I cut you that much slack, cut this guy some more slack too. Cut all these other people some slack. How come I, I cut you all this slack and you tighten up on everybody? You don't treat them the way I treat you. And he's saying, I want you to treat them the way I have treated you. I want you to do with them what I have done with you. Let them go. Wipe the slate clean. Let them off the hook. Because in a very practical way, this is, I don't know if you, if this is okay to describe it this way, but I will. This is the antidote to fear. This is the antidote to fear. If you let that go, if you let them off the hook, this is when I would, I promise you, if you begin fearful, as you let them go, as you show gratefulness or uh, graciousness, and gratitude to the Lord, your fear quotient will begin to disappear. First John chapter four, there is no fear in love. Thus saith the Lord, verse 18, instead, perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. Fear means I don't think that God is merciful. Fear would denote that I don't think that God is graceful, that he's a graceful God. This says that I think that God may punish me. And to that, the verse says, the one who fears has not matured in love. Let me read that again. It says, the one who fears has not matured in love. It doesn't say you can't mature to that place, but it says at this moment in your fear, you have not matured in love. In essence, you phrase it another way. If you would mature in love, your fear would decrease. Slowly, your fear would 
disappear. So every time you invite God's love in the front door of your life, then fear is running out the back door of your life. And that's exactly the way we want to live. I got to stay grateful and generous because God is so good. And I got to stay gracious to every single person, all those in my sphere of influence, because God has been gracious to me. Now, here's the last one. To live fearlessly, to live fully, I need to live my life for God's glory, because he's going to share his glory with me. G-L-O-R-Y, you can fill it in. Right now, you live for the glory of God. Now, how do you do that? Jesus says in Matthew chapter 5, I read to you from verse 16, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works. That's the key, the good works they can see. And give glory to your Father who is in heaven. What happens when you do that? It really opens up your life to more of God's goodness, your capacity to receive gets greater, more of God's goodness, more of God's mercy, more of God's grace. The Bible says in 1 Peter, in the first chapter, God in his divine power, this is verse 3, has given us everything we need for living a godly life, everything because of his goodness and his mercy. This power is given to us through knowing Jesus, hallelujah, which brings us to all of these tremendous benefits. And he has called us to share in his own goodness and glory. One day, you and I will share fully in God's goodness and in God's glory. If that sounds good to you, please say amen. amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to open this uh, portion of scripture, Lord, Psalm 23. We thank you, Lord, that you have spoken so deeply with using so few words and phrases, Lord. We are so blessed, Lord, that we've been given the opportunity to dig into this a little bit over these last few weeks. We look forward, Lord, to all that you are doing now and all that you are going to do. We pray, Lord, in Jesus' strong name, if that if there is any fear in our lives now, anxiety, animosity, confusion, that those would all be vanquished now as we press into you using this last verse, Lord, in Psalm 23. Surely, goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. We know, Lord, that if it wasn't true, you wouldn't say it. So we hang our hat on it. We embrace it, Lord, in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, uh, over all of those that have gathered this morning. We are grateful, Lord, that you have spoken to us, not just corporately, but in some cases, Lord, you have spoken individually to us in very specific ways. Thank you, Lord, for that. We're appreciative, Lord, and lift your name high. Congregation, before we get uh, ready to close, I just want to make sure everybody that's come here in person, here in the room, out on the lanai, everybody who's tuned in on Zoom, that you've had an opportunity to receive Christ. That's the biggest thing that we have to offer is uh, to uh, show you the invitation that Jesus gives to you. He says, come to me. He says, all who are weary and heavy laden, I will give you rest. The Bible says that there's no other name on heaven and on earth by which a person can be saved. Just one name, Jesus the Christ. If anything that we've done this morning, any songs we've, we've uh, sung, any scripture verses we've looked at, any conversation we've had, if any of that resonates with you, if you can sense Jesus calling to you, wanting to have a real relationship or friendship with you, not through somebody else, not through your spouse or through your parents, through your children, through your siblings, just with you, individual, 
If you sense that, I urge you in the strongest way possible, say yes to him. You got nothing to lose and everything to gain. All you got to do is say yes. Say a prayer, ask Christ to come into your life. Now, I realize that saying a prayer, maybe because it's new to you, maybe it might be uncomfortable. I can help you in saying the prayer. I can provide you the vocabulary. But what I, and I'm going to do that in the next few moments. But what I'd ask you to do is you provide the voice. Repeat the prayer in an audible voice as there's a dynamic that takes place, not present when you're just speaking silently. Say it in an audible voice, that's number one. And then offer everything that is you, your personality and your uniqueness, your genuineness, your emotions, all of the things that make you, you. Offer that to the Lord. Allow Jesus to live in you. And I can guarantee you, your life will never be the same. Everybody in the room, everybody out on the lanai, everybody in Zoom, please repeat after me in an audible voice. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father I, thank Jesus. I thank you for Jesus. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus I'm, a I'm a sinner. I've done lots of things, I've done lots of things on my own. On my own. I have not always, I have not always asked, for asked for your help or your advice. Or your advice. I want to change that oh, now. Change that. This, morning, this morning, I recognize you, I recognize you as, my as my forgiver. And I want to live, and I want to live with, you as my leader. with you as my leader. Come into my life. Come into my life. And as best as I know how, as as I know for how, as long as I know how, as long as I, know how I, will follow you. I will follow you. So now I say, so, now I say, so I can hear me, so you can hear me, so my neighbor can hear me, and the devil can hear me. Jesus Christ is my Lord. I will follow him and him alone. Thank you, Jesus, Thank you, Jesus, for loving me, for loving me first. first. Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us stewardship of that gospel message. We pray your richest blessing over any of those that have made new commitments, Lord, here in the room, out on the lanai, or those tuning in on Zoom. We pray as well, Lord, that any of those that are making, are making commitments on a replay on Zoom, not watching live, but watching a replay of the service, but making commitments to you. Lord, we glorify your holy name because we know it is not your will that even one should be lost, Lord. Continue to draw them near to you. We pray you that you would bless all of the folks that have made new commitments this morning. Allow them to know, Lord, that the, the, that's the most important decision any human being could make, that their trajectory of their, their eternity just changed a few moments ago, in that previously they were headed for an eternity totally separated from you. But now they are assured of, promised, an eternity with you in heaven for all time. Lord, we thank you for that. We pray, Lord, your blessing over all of the folks that have gathered, both virtually and in person. We ask that you would bless us as we head into our week, Lord. We love you. We thank you. And we praise you, Lord, this morning. We pray in Jesus Christ's holy name. Congregation, please help me close by saying amen, amen. and amen and amen. Ladies and gentlemen, um, this concludes the service for this morning. If you receive Christ for the first time this morning, I want to encourage you to see Chris is the lovely lady standing by the door. She's got a Bible for you. Don't start your, your journey with Christ without a Bible. You need the Bible. Take one from her so that you can mark it up. You can write what the Lord is speaking to you. You can make personal notes to yourself and to the Lord as you read his precious word. Um, we're going to sing one more song. We're singing uh, Mary's Boy Child. If you want to sing, you can stick around. We're going to sing again. If you are heading out already, then we want to say thanks for coming this morning. If you want to visit with one another, we certainly encourage that. Uh, you don't have to wait till we finish the songs. You can start talking, no problem. Whatever you choose to do, God bless you and have a great rest of the day. Thank you.
Thank you, everybody.